Why does platform engineering so often end in failure? Why did Cheetos Cosmetics end in failure? And what's the connection? Why isn't it enough to hire a product manager, chuck them into a platform team, and magically have platform as a product with all of its benefits? Hello, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. That way you can stay up to date with all of the cool stuff that's happening here. I'm Steve Smith, I'm Cornish, and I'm the Global Head of Modernization and Platforms at Equal Experts. I'll be your host for today. I'm afraid Dave Farley isn't available. He's lost a bet to me, again, so he's busy at the zoo, checking out if the giraffes really are shorter than me. Platform engineering is a good thing. It can help your teams to achieve engineering excellence in terms of speed, quality, and reliability at scale. I spent years in platform engineering leadership and advisory roles. I have seen platforms work really well in some enterprise organizations. And unfortunately, I've seen platforms not work out more often than not. Lots of people say that platform as a product is an answer, but that's not enough. Let me pause there to say thank you to our sponsors. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic and Tuple. Equal Experts is a multinational consultancy built on applying the ideas and techniques that we talk about here to build great software for their clients. All of these companies, though, offer products and services that are very well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, click on the links in the description below to check them out. Let's have a history lesson. In 2016, Cheetos decided that their successful cheesy snacks, which I love, were the just perfect springboard for launching a range of makeup products. They were a commercial failure. It turns out people want their lip balms to be vanilla or minty fresh, not cheesy and bright orange. The product lesson here is that build it and they will come doesn't work. You have to learn what your users need, not what you want to build. You can find out more about Cheetos Cosmetics by looking at the link on screen now. Here's the ideal state of a product team. The diagram shows an outcome-oriented team. They work on a product. They have an in-team, empowered product manager balancing business initiatives from commercial stakeholders with user needs from actual users. What I usually see in enterprise organizations is something different. It's feature teams. This diagram now shows a feature team. It's an output-oriented team. It's a project team working on product in name only because they have a disempowered product manager who has to build whatever the commercial stakeholders tell them to build. User needs, unfortunately, don't get much of a look in. Why is this relevant to platform engineering? Well, sometimes a platform team is just a bunch of infrastructure engineers. I've seen platforms like that. The team builds the capabilities they want to build, ostensibly for their users, really for themselves. And there's no feedback loop with their users. This is build it and they will come all over again. You might also know it as platform as a project. And in recent years, there's been a lot of talk of platform as a product as some kind of silver bullet, but it doesn't work on its own. It's not enough. Why is that? If you put a product manager into a platform team and don't create the right conditions for product development, you're going to end up with a platform team that still builds something users don't want your platform team will still create the equivalent of Cheetos Cosmetics because there'll be a feature team, not a product team. What happens is the product manager is told by the engineers now what to build instead of commercial stakeholders. And the engineers on the platform team simply can't know what's best for their users. Build it and they will come can only result in unhappy users and failure. Here are some badly anonymized examples. An InfoSec lead engineer at an American bank was made a platform product manager and they directed the engineers to build something that was super secure. Then they wandered off to work on an InfoSec thing for a few months. Turns out the platform that was built was so secure that no teams could actually use it. It had to be written off after a year of effort. Think of all that time and money that could have been spent creating cheesy cosmetics instead. A German retailer had a big on-premise technology estate, so they spun up a cloud platform team from existing engineers, and they hired a product manager off the street and inserted them into the team. The platform engineers completely ignored the product manager. They embarked on a cloud migration of the entire estate, and a migration nobody had asked for. It lasted for a year and was deemed a technology failure as well 
as a business failure. And an Australia travel company had a lot of teams all building services on top of a low-level platform. You could say they had technology anarchy, which I covered in another video. The link to that is on screen now. A new platform product manager was brought in and they advocated for a central CI-CD pipeline. It was built after three months, but no teams wanted to use it, not just because that guidance imposed on top of anarchy looks like rules and people resist anything that looks like command and control, but also because the product manager simply hadn't gone out and asked the users what they need. So platform as a product isn't enough. Your whole platform team needs to have a customer service mindset. Platform engineering is customer service. You need the team to wake up every morning and ask themselves, what's the biggest problem that teams face today and how do we solve it together? You need a product manager who's empowered to balance user needs with platform needs, who listens to what teams want and decides on what it is that teams actually need. The team can't be doing build it and they will come. They need to be doing listen, build and learn. This is how you accelerate speed, quality and reliability of teams at scale. If there's one thing to remember from this video, it's build it and they will come does not work. Next time I'm here, we'll cover another engineering topic, but Dave has to find out how tall those drafts are first. The last one was cheating. I saw it standing on tiptoes. Thanks for watching.